Let's consider another game here. Now, rather than talking about prisoners or competitors or anything like that, let's take an example of a husband and wife. And we can say here, the husband and wife, for whatever reason, maybe they left their cell phones at home, and they have to figure out what to do in terms of meeting up for an evening activity. So well, they have to make the decision simultaneously, and they can't communicate between each other to figure out where they should go. So each of them has a choice of whether to go to dinner or to a movie. You'll notice here, if they both go to dinner, they both get a payout of 20. If they both go to the movie, they both get a payout of 10. But if one goes to one place and one goes to the other place, they're kind of sad because what they really wanted was to be somewhere together. So if they don't match up, they both get a payout of zero. So now let's analyze this situation the same way we did the last one. So you can say, if the husband goes to dinner, where should the wife go? Well, if the husband goes to dinner, we're up here. Well, the wife's payouts, again, are in green. 20 is better than zero, so the wife obviously wants to follow him to dinner. If the husband goes to the movie, well then the wife has a payout of either zero or ten. It's a better option if the wife thinks the husband's going to the movie to go to the movie. Now thinking about this from the other direction, if the wife goes to dinner, where does the husband want to go? Well if the wife goes to dinner, and the husband's payouts are in blue here, 20 is better than zero, so the husband wants to go with the wife to dinner. And if the wife goes to the movie, the husband has a choice to either get zero or 10. Husband also wants to go to the movie to get the payout of 10. This example differs from the previous one because there is no dominant strategy in this case. Say if the husband goes to dinner, the wife wants to go to dinner. If the husband goes to the movie, the wife wants to go to the movie. We don't have a consistent best choice like we did before. Similarly here, we don't have a consistent best choice. So then how do we think about what the equilibrium in this situation is going to be? Just like I did in the previous example, what I've done here is I've circled the husband's best responses in blue. You know, if the wife goes to dinner, the husband wants to go to dinner. Well, that's here. If the wife goes to the movie, the husband wants to go to the movie. That's here. And similarly for the wife, I've circled her best responses in green. And we said before that a Nash equilibrium was a situation where each player's strategy was a best response to what they thought the other person was doing. So in the context of my circles, the Nash equilibria are the places where you see both a blue circle and a green circle. Unlike the last example, we have two equilibria here. So either one of these situations, either they both go to dinner or they both go to the movie, are mathematically speaking equilibrium outcomes. Which is sort of frustrating because then we don't know which one's actually going to happen because it's really hard to guess, you know, what does the wife think the husband is going to do, and vice versa. In this case, we get a little bit of light shed on the problem, because if you were going to make this decision, you could see, well, this payout of 2020, Pareto dominates this payout of 1010. So if you, for example, were the wife, you say, well, I've got to guess what the husband's going to do. There's a higher potential payout for both people at dinner. So maybe it makes sense for me to go to dinner. You could think about a situation where these payouts were equivalent, in which case the best thing you could do in terms of response is really to flip a coin because you really wouldn't be able to tell what the other person was going to do.